Hello everyone. I'd like to start off by going over the abstract data types that we talked about in class. So I started telling you about two abstract data types. One of them was called a stack and the other one was called a queue. And what I mean by an abstract data type is that um, we don't necessarily know how this is going to be implemented. So it's more abstract than a data structure. Um, it's, it is a data container of sorts, but we don't necessarily know how it's going to work. We just know what it's supposed to do. So for a stack, we have the following in the ADT. We have a method called push. And I'll make this a stack over printable objects again, or printable references. So I'm keeping with this, this abstract class here too that, okay, anything that's going to be in my collection has to at least have a print method. So I'll inherit from this printable class and overwrite that. Okay. But yeah, so, so some kind of container data type. Now what push does is it says, I am going to add this object to the top of the stack. All right. And then we have another method called pop. Whoops. Um, yeah, let me just say void pop. Oh, and actually, actually it's not a void. What it's going to do is return. Well, it's going to take off and return the element on the top of the stack. Okay. And then, you know, sometimes we don't actually want to take off the top of that element. Sometimes we just want to see what's there. So sometimes you'll, you'll see another method called peak top. Return the element that's on the top without changing it, without um, mutating the stack or, or removing that element. And then we should also probably have a method to keep track of how big this stack is. All right. So a stack is what we call a last in, first out, or LIFO abstract data type. So what that means is the last thing that we push on is the first thing that we're going to pop out. So as I was saying in class, think of it like a stack of plates. We keep stacking the plates on, we push a new plate on top, another plate on top, another plate on top, um, and we can only take a plate off of the top. If we try to take a plate out of the middle somewhere, all the plates are going to fall over and, and uh, we're going to get in trouble. Okay, so we're only allowed to remove plates from the top. So this is the functionality that I expect as somebody who's using this class, and that's why it's abstract. But um, I haven't said anything about how to actually implement these. Now, but as, as I was saying in class, though, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. We could have an underlying array of printable references. And maybe we just keep making that array bigger, right? So we keep track of how many elements are in the array. Every time you push something new, you make it bigger. Every time you pop something, you make it smaller. But actually, there's an even more natural data structure to use which is a singly linked list. And that's because um, if you think about a singly linked list that we made, we were able to add to the beginning and remove from the beginning very quickly, regardless of how many elements were there. And so if we view the front of a linked list like the top of a stack, it's really like taking the stack and rotating it 90 degrees. Um, so the front of the stack, you can really think of like the front of a linked list. In that case, a stack really is just like a singly linked list. And so what we can do is say, all right, for a push, so for void um, stack push printable object, um, I'm going to say list.add first object. Okay, so, so pushing onto a stack, while well, the underlying data structure that I'm actually using on this linked list, we can pretend, you know, that's just the same thing as adding to the beginning of the list. And then for, for popping, so printable stack pop, in that case, it's just removing from the beginning. So I'm just going to remove from the beginning of the list and return whatever that was. That's my pop. All right. And then for the size, well, I already actually kept track of how many elements and already had a size method in the linked list class. So again, I can just wrap around that. All right. 
So maybe it wasn't completely obvious at first, but once I gave you the functionality of a linked list, we see that, or once I gave you, I specified what the functionality of a stack was supposed to be, I could see that a linked list is a very natural data structure to actually implement the stack. Right, I'm, I'm skipping peak top for now, but that would just be a matter of looking at the head of the linked list. All right, but so if I'm using a linked list as my underlying data structure, pushing is as simple as moving as uh, adding something to the beginning, and popping is as simple as as removing something from the beginning. Okay, so it's like I pretend that my stack is is going sideways. So let's let's test this out. I'll, I'll change what's in my driver, and I'll actually make a stack and what I'll do is, is I'll push on the following. So I'll say push, all right, let's push on a new printable int. Let's say I push on a four first, okay? So, so the stack was empty, but I'm gonna put a four on. So let me actually write up here in comments what was happening. So stack was empty, but, but now I push on a four. Okay, next, let me push on a seven. All right, so, so remember push adds to the top, so, so seven goes on top there. And let me now push a one. All right, so one goes on the top there. So that's what's on my stack. Now what I'll do is let's let's loop through. I'll say while well, stack dot size is greater than zero, let's see out. Um, well, actually, let me. I'll save this in a variable first. Printable object is equal to stack dot pop. So I don't even have to know that it's a printable int. It's, it's a generic printable object, right? That's how I defined or declared um, what it was gonna be doing. This returns a generic printable object, uh, but then polymorphism will ensure that I go to the specific print method that's there. So there is a printable method that will have been implemented in the printable int that happens to be in this list. I'll call that here. And let me actually, the other thing I'll do is because these were dynamically allocated when I push them in, let me make sure that I delete them just so I don't have a memory leak. I'll delete those objects that are coming off the stack. It wasn't the stack's job to delete um, what the reference is pointed to. The stack was actually just storing the references. Okay, good. Let me see if I can compile this. Whoops, okay, it looks like I made one little mistake. So linked list.cpp line 92. I said return n, what I should have said is return list.size. So the list implements a size method, I'm just going to call that method and return what, what that gave me. Okay, so let me go back and try this again. Um, okay, now we get this whole wall, right? Let's be a little bit careful here. Always go to the top and it says, okay, no match for, for um, object print. Ah, that's because, okay. If I go back and I look at my printable, um, this is actually a void method. It does the printing for me, so I didn't need to say see out. Okay, so anyway, don't be afraid of that, that, that wall of errors that you get from uh, the standard template library. Just go up to the top and see, well, what, what's the problem? And the problem here was, was on line 21 of this uh, driver. Okay, so I just need to call the print method that'll print it out. Let's go back and try this again. Now we're good. All right, so what's gonna happen when I push a four, push a seven, push a one, and then pop them all out and print them? Well, let's see. I get my magic number 174, okay? Because they come off in the reverse order that I put them on, right? It's last in, first out. All right, but, but yeah, and, and the message here again is I have this abstract data type. I told you what I wanted to do, and then I thought about it for a second. I realized, you know what? I've got just the data structure for you. The singly linked list can handle this really well. Okay. Okay, but let's talk about the queue. This is a little bit different. Rather than being a last in first out data structure, the queue is actually a first in first out or FIFO data structure. Um, so this acts like an actual line or they, the British would call it a queue. That's what we call it, we stick with the British. But, but the idea is, okay, so, so we have this method, I'll call it nq. And so this method is going to be adding an object um, to the end of the line. 
But the difference here is we break the, the same symmetry. Before in the stack, we were adding and removing from the same place. We were adding and removing from the top. But with the queue, we're actually going to be, so I'll call this method DQ, we're actually going to be removing from the front of the line. So remove and return the object from the front of the line. Okay? And I'll just also have a size method here. Okay, now I can't use the methods that I have the link list as readily. So the link list data structure isn't isn't readily usable for this way. Um, the reason is because yeah, I have an add first and I have a remove first. But I don't have um, an add last or a remove last. And so because this is not symmetric, I'm going to have to have at least one of those. So let's let's say that, okay, if I, if I go, you know, let me insist though, let me use a linked list and maybe I'm going to have to add some more functionality. So if I use a linked list, well, I can at least, I can at least remove the person at the front of the line, right? So I can think of the linked list like exactly the line data structure. It's out in a line there, and, and the head is, we could say, the front of the line. So, well, I might as well get the easiest one out of the way first. I mean, the size then, if we're using a linked list, is just going to be the exact same. Return list.size. Um, and yeah, I, I can definitely service the line just fine already. So I could say um, printable star DQ, that's that service thing line, that's, that's taking something off the front of the line. Um, so that's just going to be return list dot remove first. But if I'm going to do it this way, then, then for, for my, if I'm going to make an NQ or, or add to the end of the line, so this was removing from the front of the line, and then this is removing from or, or adding to adding something at the end of the line. So we want to add this, this object reference to the end of the line. Um, in that case, if, if I've decided to remove first when I DQ, then I'm going to have to add last to NQ. Of course, if I go to try to compile this, I'm going to say, well, there, you don't have an add last. Okay, so I'm missing some functionality in the linked list class that I need. So yeah, let's let's create an add last method. So I'll say void add last printable. Oops, add last printable star object. All right, so so we actually want to add an object reference to the end of the linked list now. And this is not going to be quite so clean as adding to the beginning. Um, if I wanted to add something called Layla to the beginning, before it was this three-step process, right? First, I make the new container object. Then I make the container objects next point to what the head currently points to. And then I change the head to point to that. And now I'm all good to go. Um, I have my new element here, whoops, at the front of the link list. But if I want to add to the end, I actually have to start this cursor off at the beginning where head points to and keep going next and next and next until I get to, to a place where I see the next is going to be null. And then I can actually add this. But see, I can't jump straight to the end. Um, I have to actually walk through everything starting at the head. All right. So, so this, unlike the add first, which was just that three step process, um, where I just, I made the new reference, I set it's next to be what's currently the head, and I set the head to be it. And of course, keep track of the changing size. Um, this did not matter how many nodes were in the list, I could jump straight to the beginning and add the thing. But unfortunately, if I want to add last, well, I'm going to have to loop through the entire linked list. All right. Now there is actually a special case, if the list is empty, so if the head is null, the list is empty and adding the last is the same thing as adding the first. So I can just go ahead and call add first. All right, so if the list is empty, adding last is the same thing as adding first. 
But otherwise, okay, let's, so now we're gonna assume that there's at least one element in the list. And so in this case, as I was showing in the picture, I have to come up with a cursor. So I'll have some linked node reference. I'll call it cursor. Starts off as the head. And as long as the next is not null, I have to keep going. So while cursor next is not null, um, I have to keep going. So I'll say cursor equals cursor next. So again, follow these arrows, right? So I start off at the head, and as long as um, my next is not null, then change the cursor to be next, and then change the cursor to be the next, and then change the cursor to be next. And then I was about to get to the end where the null was. And once I do that, then I know that, that okay, wherever cursor is, the next is currently null, so that's the end of it. So I can say cursor next is actually the new element that I want to put there. All right, and then I'll go ahead also and implement or increment the number of elements. Okay, so let me test this out now. What I'm gonna do is, is I'll change, okay, actually first I should make sure this compiles. Um, so I have this new functionality and I'm using it to, to remove from the front of the queue. So let's try to make this and it makes just fine. Let me actually test it now. So I will replace, in this selection, I will replace um, push by NQ and I'll replace pop by DQ and I'll replace stack by Q. <laughs> so I'm just changing all my, my, my stack operations to Q operations. And that's just about it, except I need to change this to be a Q. Okay, I think that's everything. All right, so, so I'm, I'm calling NQ, I'm calling the add method on the Q in the same order that I called it on the stack. Um, but this time, uh, this, the Q, unlike the stack, actually services things in the order that they went in. And so four is in first, so four is gonna get service first, then seven, then one. But the real bummer of this whole thing is that I had to do something very inefficient to, to add something to the end of the linked list. And so let's take a pause and, and reflect on that. And, and then in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do this more efficiently, but we're gonna to have to change the data structure. All right, so let's let this sink in and then we'll continue.